Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm going to get started <clears throat> for the sake of everyone's time. Thank you all for being here today. I don't think that this will take a whole hour, but I'm glad to have you here and this is being recorded. So we will post this on our Cougar Talk YouTube page. Uh, before we get started, I will tell you a little bit about our office. My name is Mindy Pelletier, and I am the program manager for the Center for Undergraduate Research, as well as the lead coordinator for the UMaine Student Symposium. Dina um, Rice is also part of our office, and she is our administrative coordinator. We both work for both aspects of um, both UMSS and Cougar. So we do all the things in both. So if you have a question for any of us um, about any aspect of either Cougar or UMSS, any of the emails that you see or links that you see will come to us no matter um, which one you decide to use or remember or have in your contact list. So never worry about that. And our number is the same for both. Um, you can contact me at 3583 if you ever need anything. You'll see later on in my slides that we have a number of ways to, <laughs> to be contacted. So um, that's not something that you should worry about. And please never hesitate if you have a question. Your questions help us here in our office to do better, basically to help um, make it easier for you and anyone else that um, wants to be a part of what we do here. Okay, next slide. I should probably share my slides. Okay, so you should all see um, my slides here. Um, it's nothing, nothing too spectacular, but it does help as far as visual presentation. Um, this year will be um, UMSS 23, as it is not this current year, but next year. Uh, we, we typically say this year because it is the upcoming um, symposium. So here on the screen, you will see uh, our team. This is uh, what UMSS and Cougar is made up of. UMSS also does have an executive committee that's made up of undergraduate and graduate students from both the um, governing agencies uh, for both, as well as other areas on campus. And this helps us to um, learn more about from different angles how we can make this event better. Uh, we um, give, UMSS gives the community and students a place to meet, to view and, and their research um, and creative work. Um, and it's, this event is really important for students to elevate where they're at as far as um, their research and presentation skills, which is very important. Very simply, we will start off with what does UMSS mean? UMSS, which is an ac acronym that we throw around a lot, simply means UMaine Student Symposium. The full name is UMaine Student Symposium for Research and Creative Activities. This is for graduate and undergraduate students at UMaine as well as at our sister campus, UMaine Machias. So students in graduate and undergraduate uh, areas in both campuses can join us and present at this event. Um, there are other ways uh, I'll get to that in a few minutes that people can be a part of it. Um, the research and creative activities means that we accept all disciplines um, in our process. So we require an abstract to be submitted from students. That can be from students from any discipline, the arts, music, history, English, as well as um, the stereotypical STEM fields, but we do not limit it to those fields. We feel that here at the Center for Undergraduate Research, that research can be done in any field, and it is done in every, every field. If you're interested in hearing a panel about um, what some non-STEM um, faculty members do as far as mentoring students in research, I suggest that you check out our Cougar Talk. Uh, we had a panel last year, I think it was, that um, includes some people in non-STEM related fields that talk about the re their research and the research they're doing with their students. 
we highlight at this event the research that and creative activities that students at UMaine and UMaine Machias have been doing all year, or maybe it's an accumulation of years that they've been here. Um, it could be a capstone experience. It could be um, research they've done under the Center for Undergraduate Research um, fellowships, either summer or uh, academic year. So that's what you'll see here. And it's available for students, faculty, staff, and communities of both areas. And you might think, well, what, what can a community member or a staff member do that has to, you know, to help out UMSS? Well, there's different opportunities for people to, to um, participate in our event. There's presenting, of course, as a student, um, or helping a student present as a faculty mentor. <clears throat> uh, you can also attend the event. Uh, we, it's open and free to everyone, the public. Uh, there's judging, which we always need judging, and I'll get into that a little bit later. We need those folks to do that for our students, as well as volunteering, because it is a big event. So many hands make light work. So we're going to start talking about um, how to be, like if your status is you are going to be a presenter at the UMaine Student Symposium. How do you become a student presenter? Well, you should probably find a faculty mentor. That faculty mentor is going to help you through the process of the research side of things, as well as writing your abstract. Additionally, we also have on our website um, a great, on our Cougar YouTube page, a great video regarding how to write a good abstract that Melissa McGinnis did for us and walked us through how to create the best abstract that you can and what, what should be in that abstract. And I highly suggest that. That video is going under some editing right now. So um, we just needed to take out the stuff from last year's symposium and we'll have that up shortly. The abstract um, submission form, you submit through a Google form to our office, uh, and then we'll collect that information. That opens on January 18th, which is one or two days after we come back from, um, or the students come back from winter break. And it closes March 10th at 4 p.m. So that's when we shut down that form. So there's plenty of time. It sounds like plenty of time. It's better to start earlier. <laughs> I do suggest um, that folks thinking about um, creating an abstract or if you're contracted from our office to do an abstract and submit to the symposium that you start on that sooner than later so that you have plenty of time um, to allow yourself to have a good abstract to submit for the best, um, the best submission possible. Why, you might ask, is it important that a student submits at UMSS? It sharpens the student's presentation skills and allows them to learn to talk to community members that are, aren't necessarily in the weeds of their own research. Uh, you can network with your peers as well as um, connect with our sponsors. We have sponsors at the event. That's how we make this possible. We reach out to um, businesses um, to, to get sponsorships. We actually had Hannaford was a sponsor last year, and we had a few students that ended up interning with Hannaford. So it's kind of like a reverse career fair where they get to see what you as a student have been working on. They get to see your presentation skills, but your organization skills, how you present yourself, and probably that's the kind of employee that they want. Um, it's important for us to share what uh, students are researching and working on here on campus with our community so that they get a more rounder picture of what we do here at UMaine. And I made a boo-boo on this slide, but we'll just continue. Um, if you are interested in being a judge, a lot of people ask, can I be a judge? I'm a staff member. Can, can I be a judge? Yes, absolutely, you can be a judge. There's no uh, qualifications. You don't have to have a certain GPA to be a judge. 
um, judging this year will happen in person because the event is fully in person. In previous years, we've had virtual judging um, where students had to submit video presentations. But this year, you will need to go to the event, which is open from 9 to 3 at the Collins Center for the Arts, and judging goes from 9 to 2. Uh, so anybody can be a judge. Graduate students um, only can be judges. We do not allow undergraduate students to be judges because they would be, of course, judging their peers. And graduate students, um, we assign to undergraduates. There is an impact. Um, if you are a judge, it's, it advances the student's communication with you. You get to um, speak with the student about what it is that they're doing, learn more about um, their world of research. It's very interesting. Some of these students, all of them do amazing work that's incredibly interesting and impactful to our community and our lives. Uh, these are the students that will move on to do amazing things in the world. And to be a part of that as far as judging is really impactful. Dina, I believe, well, I'll, I will, we've had some technical difficulties, but I will have everyone I will send everyone an email that has all the information and all the links that have for um, signing up to be a judge. Uh, typically, judges have three to five students that they need to go and look at their poster and speak to them. And we have a form that's filled out that needs to be filled out by you, the judge, as well as a rubric. The students have this rubric as well, so they know what they need to point at in order to. Um, get the highest score possible for them. Attending, how, how do I attend? Well, it's at the Collins Center for the Arts this year here at the University of Maine. Um, parking is will be available for those that aren't typically on campus. Um, we do ask that if you are attending that you register before, although registration will be available the day of the event, but it does help us know as far as numbers if you register ahead of time. Um, anyone can attend. Like I said, it's open to the public. It is free. We do not charge. We want folks from um, campus community as well as external to campus to come and see um, what it is that we're up to. Volunteering. Who can volunteer? Anyone can volunteer. We uh, need a lot of volunteers. This is what makes this um, event happen. There are a lot of small pieces to UMSS. You can see here in the picture, uh, many easels and boards. That's only a section, a section of what we actually um, put up. We had uh, a little over 200 to 300 presentations last year. So we needed that many easels and boards and some require tables for exhibits to show off their work. Um, but essentially we were put, post, putting these up um, the day before the event and it's a big chunk of time, but the more folks we have there to do that, the easier it becomes and it's fun. Um, picking up is also a big deal. You know, the CCA has events all weekend long, so we need to pick up quickly. Um, we care about our volunteers a lot. So it's really, we feed you, we will give you snacks and make sure that you're hydrated to volunteer with us. Uh, we do post this through the Bodwell Center if you need those volunteer hours for any uh, clubs that you're in. So we know that the event is Friday, April 14th, 2023. This is our eighth annual event. There will be several hundred students presenting their research um, and it's free and open to the public. I'm going to pause here. If you have any questions about anything that I've touched on, please put that into the Q&A uh, and then I can answer those at the end of this presentation. So feel free to write those right in the Q&A and I'll get to those. We have a few um, frequently asked questions. This is always developing. Um, as we get more questions, that's why it's really important that we get questions from you all so that we can help, you know, we're in the thick of it all the time. We don't know all the answers, but we might not know what trips somebody else up or that we're not presenting well enough on. So it's really important that you ask us these questions. 
um, when can students apply? The submission form, Google form opens on January 18th and will remain open. We ask that you be sure to read your submission through. We will post a PDF of all the questions so you know what to expect and don't, you know, because sometimes you can't flip through to the other questions. We will post that so you know what we're going to ask you. Be sure to read through everything and, and make sure that everything is answered because we don't like to go back and have to edit that. When does the submission form close? The submission form closes on Friday, March 10th at um, at 4 p.m. And we do not accept late submissions. This We don't accept late submissions um, due to the fact that we have to process all the submissions we get here uh, in order to create the book of abstracts and um, communicate with our students. So it's really important that you um, get your abstract submission in before Friday, March 10th. How much does the, it cost to print a poster? Posters will only be 36 by 48 inches this year. And we've worked with UMaine Printing to um, keep the cost at $52. So when you send in your poster, which will have another follow-up webinar concerning posters and how um, to send that through to UMaine Printing, that will cost $52. So if you are an awardee from, um, Cougar, as far as a graduate or undergraduate academic year or summer fellowship, think about using those dollars towards um, your printing costs. Sometimes um, departments will also uh, pick up that cost for you. This is the best way we know because UMaine Printing will look at your um, poster in a way to make it the best way possible so that you're not printing it and then it's very tiny on a 36 by 48 sheet of paper. They they want to have a good um, presentable poster for you and you can use them over again. So that's really important. If you were to attend another conference or symposium, you can take that poster with you. They take, UMaine Printing takes um, credit cards now, which is a huge, Huge step forward. We're so happy. Um, black bear bucks, checks, and cash. So that that widens um, things and makes it a little easier for everyone. If you need something from us, you need to get in touch with us. There are a number of ways. Um, our email is um.symposium at main.edu. But like I said, when I started the webinar, you can email anything, <laughs> anywhere, and we will get back to you and we will answer your questions and feel free to call our office. This is my direct line at 3583. We have a live chat on our website, which if nobody is, has that open, that comes to our email anyway. So we will get back to you anytime you contact us. Uh, some more resources. We are on social media with both UMSS and Cougar on Facebook, on Twitter with both, on LinkedIn with both, on TikTok with both. So a lot of our information goes out that way. That's a very easy way to be sure if you follow these that you'll receive the most up-to-date information regarding um, what's coming up and reminders. We send reminders that way too because we know that you're already getting a lot of emails. So we try our best not to inundate you with emails, but we know, we know at, sometimes we can't help it. We have to get you the information as fast as possible and that's the easiest way. But a lot of the information will be reminders and uh, new information right on our social media. Closer to the symposium, we'll be tabling at the Union so you can find us there. We have swag and uh, chocolates and um, we do open Zoom meetings so that um, anyone that has questions can pop into a Zoom meeting as well. And as I've mentioned before, our Cougar Talks, uh, these videos will be posted there. There's a lot of great resources if you have any questions. Um, we also have new offices here in Corbett Hall. We're on the first floor and we have a really nice conference room so we can meet with students here anytime as well. Okay, I do have a question and it says, what are research presentations judged on? Research presentations are, I'm going to stop my share right now, are judged on a number of different things. Um, it's important that there are too many to list right on this um, webinar, but the rubric can be found on our 
website, it has a list of everything that judges are looking for and what they will be, um, what they will be um, looking for from you in order to score you on. So that has to do with presentation, information, conclusions, um, a wide variety of things. And that information is on, um, I can send that to you as well. Does anyone else have any other questions? I know it's a lot of information and we will be doing this again uh, in a couple of weeks. It's just, I wanted to get the information out as soon as possible to give you something to think about. And maybe after you, we close and end this webinar, you'll have more questions and we really look forward to those. As I said, if you have any other questions, please drop it in the Q&A. If not, I can give you about a half an hour of your time back. So thank you for coming today. We really appreciate it. Um, please send us your comments and I will be sure to take the attendance uh, list here and send you um, the important links that we were unable to send you in the chat. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day and a great break.